Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. I am Billy Embody. Our fall camp position previews roll on today with running back and the Jack Bandit position, that outside linebacker spot that comes off the edge for the Mustangs. We're going to jump right in, though, to one of the positions that was upgraded the most, in my opinion, this offseason, and that's the running back room. SMU brought in Jalen Knighton from Miami and LJ Johnson from Texas A&M. Two of the most highly sought after transfers in the country are now Mustangs. Uh, two highly touted prospects in their own right coming out of high school, especially LJ Johnson, who sat right there with Kamar Wheaton as the top running back in the 2021 class in Texas. Now you've got LJ Johnson and Kamar Wheaton on the same roster. You've got Tyler Levine, who's coming back from his uh, off-season surgery on that knee that he played through uh, for about half the season, it seemed like. You also have veteran Velton Gardner in the mix. And look, the Mustangs have a group at running back that I think is going to really uh, rival any school, especially in, in the group of five, but especially even some of those lower to mid-tier Power 5 programs. I think the running back group is one of the strongest on the entire roster. Um, we get to our uh, positional rankings uh, preview portion of uh, the month here coming up soon, and you'll be waiting a minute to see the running backs as we count those down. But I want to begin with really who was probably the heart and soul of this team in 2022, at least in my opinion, and that's Tyler Levine. He comes off a season where he led SMU in rushing, and he did it playing through a really difficult injury, something that required a major surgery in the offseason. He didn't go through spring ball. He finished 2022 with 142 carries for 642 yards, 10 scores. He also added 16 receptions for 122 yards on the season. And if you go back to really the, the start of the season, we thought, well, Trey Siggers and Belton Gardner were probably going to be the lead backs. They also had TJ McDaniel in the mix. Uh, but it was Tyler Levine that really emerged into what you could count on the most uh, for this offense as he was able to uh, put together one of the better running back seasons, I think, just with the way it all panned out um, and how he was able to um, really come on strong for SMU over the course of really the second half of the season in particular, once he got that shot um, and was second on the team with 773 all-purpose yards, of course, behind Rasheed Rice. He had 200-yard games. Um, and in Memphis and Houston, against Memphis and Houston, uh, he had his career high in rushing attempts with 25 in each game. But if you look back at the start of the season, he didn't get above 10 yards um, until – the Navy game where he touched that 28 mark uh, on six carries. And that just went to show kind of how the running back position was evolving for SMU, I think. Um, Kamar Wheaton had gotten a shot. Trey Siggers had eventually gotten hurt. Felton Gardner was nicked up here and there. But then it came against Tulsa where he toted the rock 17 times for 72 yards and three touchdowns in that game, that first win at Tulsa in quite some time. And then he peeled off back-to-back 100-plus-yard performances against Houston and South Florida. Then he went for 18 carries for 82 yards against Tulane. Of course, that train wreck of a game probably could have, I wouldn't say gone differently, but SMU shied away from Tyler Levine early, and then things kind of happened and unraveled. Um, but then against Memphis and BYU, had 64 yards and 91 yards, had three touchdowns between the two games. I think for me... Tyler Levine is one of the biggest questions, though, entering the 2023 season. And the biggest reason why is he's coming off a major knee surgery. He didn't go through spring. Now, uh, he is, I don't want to say fully cleared, but uh, I, he didn't have a brace on when I saw him. Um, and so that is something to watch as fall camp starts August 2nd, at least reporting date. It's August 2nd uh, from what we're told. And I think he's somebody that if he is brought along slowly at the start of the season could almost be like a trade um, deadline pickup for SMU at some point in the season. Now, I don't know 
where his recovery stands. Um, I'm actually in Houston uh, as you're listening to this, and and we'll have either heard from Rhett Lashley or hear from him soon um, on that front in terms of maybe where his recovery stands. Um, Rhett Lashley does talk um, at around lunchtime on Monday the 17th, if you're listening to this. And with that in mind, well, that's probably one of my biggest questions, is where do things stand uh, when it comes to um, Tyler Levine's recovery and maybe his availability for fall camp. So check on the site, on theponyexpress.com. Again, $10 for a month uh, gets you all you know you need, recruiting, team news, all those uh, things. And we'll be down in Houston, um, or we're in Houston, I guess, as you're listening to this, and we'll get an update on, on Tyler Levine's recovery when we uh, talk with Coach Lashley at the Texas uh, Coaches Convention. I think if he is brought along slowly. I mean, he's a guy that has played a lot of football, doesn't need fall camp in that sense. You want to bring him along slowly so nothing may, so he doesn't rush it and nothing major happens and, and that would stop him from being a productive player at some point for SMU this season. But if he is able to get back at it, maybe sometime during the non-conference slate, and this is, again, all speculating, but if he's able to you know, wait until maybe the TCU game. That would add another power back into the mix against the Horned Frogs. We know that defense is tough to run on in terms of the scheme Joe Gillespie has at TCU now. SMU struggled running the football against Tulsa all those years. Um, if he's ready earlier, great. You have a, a true top three rotation that you feel really good about, and that's coming off of a spring that I felt like Belton Gardner looked good. He quietly had a decent season, um, and as you watch him and see what he can put together as well, uh, that's going to be something to watch. You know, Velton Gardner was a second-leading rusher on the team, just ahead of Kamar Wheaton. And then, of course, you have Kamar, Kamar Wheaton, who is, uh, you know, a guy who missed a good bit of the spring. Uh, he was at summer workouts when I was out there, so that's a good sign. If he can put together... Uh, a good finish to his offseason, a good start to fall camp and all of those things, and he can show those flashes, well, now you, all of a sudden, you're five deep of running backs that you really feel good about overall if you're Rhett Lashley. And for Keenan Hall, it's a difficult thing to do is find that sweet spot in terms of rotating them. Um, and I think with Velton Gardner, uh, one, he led the team in yards per carry out of the running back group, 5.3 yards per carry. Um, but was nicked up at different times during the season. And I think with him coming back for yet another year, he's got he's got two years of eligibility remaining by my count. Um, he's got a chance to be kind of a dark horse producer. Um, I think he's just kind of got a little bit of wiggle that SMU uh, can use um, without a doubt. And, you know, Kamar Wheaton has that flash that we saw at various points last year to really be, a, produ a productive running back for SMU. So um, you have Tyler Levine, who's going to be brought along slowly. And during that time, in my opinion, at least, and, and look, we all know the, the workout warrior Tyler Levine is. So again, I'm speculating here, but major knee injury, major surgery right after the season is not something that most guys come back from. And I know things have changed, but if you put an eight month time frame on it, he's probably getting back to maybe a hundred percent around fall camp. And then you've got to, you know, get in shape and, and, and get some work in and, and all those things. So we'll be watching Tyler Levine. That's one of the biggest storylines of fall camp is where he's at in his recovery and getting ready for the season. Now, the two biggest storylines uh, when it comes to the running back room though, uh, from the off season, at least are what SMU brought in um, at the running back position. You have, um, Jalen Knighton coming in from Miami, and you have LJ Johnson coming in as well. SMU still has Zane Miners, the running back, the walk, former walk on running back in the mix. Um, but one thing that you saw in the spring game is you saw Jalen Knighton's ability to catch the ball out of the backfield a little bit. Uh, that is one of his big strengths. There's a great play against Florida State where he catches an angle route, and you see Jalen here catching the ball if you're watching on our YouTube channel. Um, Jalen has that ability to make a lot of plays after the catch. And he took a huge, a, a short pass and turned it into one of the biggest plays of the game uh, for Miami against Florida State. And with Rhett Lashley's offense, the big thing I felt like 
that has been missing is a true um, uh, pass catching running back, an explosive running back like uh, Ulysses Bentley, who we saw in the past. Now SMU is going to be able to do that with Jalen Knighton. And I think that changes a lot of the things that defenses have to account for. We saw last year at times SMU had to keep the running back in or kind of help a little bit in pass protection. This year, I feel like they're going to change that a bit. SMU's got a guy who can really, you know, make defenses respect him. Um, and that is Jalen Knighton out of the backfield. Um, when you look at what he was able to put together at Miami, uh, his best season, you could argue, was when Rhett Lashley was there in that 2021 season. 145 rushes for 561 yards at eight scores. Uh, his yards per carry was just a little bit below four there at 3.9. He had broken out as a freshman uh, for in for 52 carries, 209 yards, and a touchdown. But each of his two years under Rhett Lashley had over 135 yards receiving and four touchdowns um, and was well over 10 yards a catch on those receptions. So that just goes to show you they trust him in catching the football out of the backfield. And that can change a lot of things. Uh, if you run a swing route, the linebacker's got to you know take that usually. Um, and that might clear out the middle. That could open up something for a tight end or a slot. Do the, all of those things. Um, and with Preston Stone's ability to run the ball, who knows? Maybe a little QB draw as well. But Jalen Knighton, I think, has a chance to be an all AAC performer. If you look at Phil Steele, I think he had Jalen Knighton as a fourth team all AAC, maybe third. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure on that. And I feel like if he puts everything together, he could be in that second team. I mean, gosh, if it, if it really comes together, he could be the first team all AAC running back. Granted, I haven't taken as much of a dive into the AAC this year, but I do know Jalen Knight and just watching him in spring brings a toughness, brings an ability to fall forward and pick up those extra yards um, overall, um, which for his size, you might think, wow, that's a little surprising. LJ Johnson's the power guy, but Jalen Knighton runs with a toughness that obviously we've seen from Tyler Levine, but in terms of those smaller statured guys that I really haven't seen since Braden West. Um, so I think that's kind of the comp. Um, Braden West had a terrific you know, I think it was his final year when he went over a thousand yards and was really, really productive. I would like to see that type of season for Jalen Knight. If that happens, SMU's running attack is going to be right where they want it to be. Um, so Jalen Knight expectations are really high. Um, and if he can hold on to the football, that's probably one of the biggest questions, um, at least from his time at Miami. Uh, he's going to be able to be that guy in the new look AAC and maybe make some waves in non-conference games too for SMU and really start building that confidence around the run game. It was about halfway through the season that I felt like SMU really got their run game together. Um, just looking back on it, I don't recall if they had changed too much um, on it, but uh, they were able to get a lot more out of the run game once they went all in on Tyler Levine, of course, um, which is going to play another factor if you're SMU hopefully this year. But another factor on the Thunder side of the run attack is LJ Johnson. Uh, he comes from Texas, Texas A&M, where he's a highly touted prospect. He redshirted his 2021 season, 21 carries, 76 yards. Um, and then in 2022, he was a reserve once again, but six games, 10 carries, 39 yards, two touchdowns. One of those came against Miami, actually. Um, when you look at LJ Johnson, he's somebody that came into the college ranks with a lot of mileage on his uh, tires, so to speak. Um, he rushed for a gazillion yards um, down there at Cy Fair in, in um, the Houston area. And now is somebody that I feel like when you're SMU and you maybe feel a little different about how um, Kylo Levine might be, well, LJ Johnson has that power. If you saw some of that, some of those clips from the spring game, uh, he was able to finish strong in the spring. And that was a storyline overall for him. Um, it, early in the spring, he was kind of figuring things out. Uh, it was a new offense, you know, the power spread versus maybe the true spread, a little bit of pro uh, style down there in College Station with Jimbo Fisher. But he really came around at the end of uh, the spring and, and finished really well and kind of gave you that confidence in a true 
lightning thunder type attack with Jalen Knight and, and LJ Johnson. And again, you're not even factoring in a Tyler Levine, a Elton Gardner, a Kamar Wheaton. This running back stable is deep. So how will Keenan Hall dish up, dish out these carries? That's going to be an interesting question to me. I think managing expectations for this group is something that Keenan Hall does a really nice job of. You know, if you're Kamar Wheaton right now coming off the spring situation, um, now you have two more guys ahead of you, but you've got to show that you can be mature enough to handle the college level. And that's something they're working with him every day on. You know, it's a process, uh, I think, to continue to get Kamar Wheaton ready to go. So if you now force him to truly elevate his game, because remember, last season there was a point where SMU just said, you know what, we're going to turn him loose and see what happens. And that's what they did. And we saw him have a, a big game, I think, against Cincinnati. Um, maybe it was TCU. I could, I could be wrong. Um, but he was able to kind of put it together. And that was those moments where you're like, okay, this is why SMU brought in Kamar Wheaton. As far as dishing out those carries, if Tyler Levine is kind of being brought along slowly um, and, and kind of given a more uh, a steady workload as the season goes along, that's something to also factor in. I think you're looking at what could be a true RB1 situation with Jalen Knight, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm that high on him. I think he brings so much that could allow him to be a true every down back. He's not afraid to step up in pass protection. He's not the biggest guy. So again, when you see a defensive lineman coming through, if that happens, you've got a guy who isn't afraid of it by any means, but he's still uh, a little undersized in that sense. Uh, they packed a little bit more weight on him just from what I could see in uh, summer workouts a little bit. Um, and maybe that helps him hold up a little bit more. But I, I could see it being uh, Jalen Knight and getting something like 50, 50 to 60 percent of the snaps, at least just kind of how I would think about it. And then you could go LJ Johnson with another 20. You could go Tyler Levine, 15, Belton Gardner, five, Kamar Wheaton, five. It, it's just one of those things if that math, I think, uh, adds up uh, pretty close, at least. Um, you, you're going to give, I think, the lion's share of the snaps to Jalen Knighton. Um, and, and I think that makes the most sense in a, in a way um, for SMU, because if he is that guy that you really feel good about making those types of plays, considering Kamar Wheaton and LJ Johnson would both be back um, and you have that those veterans um, kind of ahead uh, in that sense, as, as far as the pecking orders um, years wise, the goal almost for Jalen Knighton, and, and a lot of people have kind of said this to me, is he could be out the door. Uh, Honestly, after you know one year, if if he puts together a thousand yard type season, um, and and shows that ability to catch the football, uh, he could, based on his age, probably head off to the draft if that's what he wanted to do. Um, and I think he would be a great third down type back in the NFL. You know, that's something that they're really kind of focusing on. Um, granted, pass protection in those situations are key, but also his ability to catch the ball. So if he has that type of season, that's something to monitor. And I think we've seen it when you look at Jalen uh, Jalen Thomas last year. Part of the thing I'm noticing a little bit more with this staff is that they're thinking big picture of NFL development in a way too. And you look at Jalen Thomas and, and what roles they put him in. For the most part, those roles were to develop him for the NFL and raise his stock. You look at Jonathan McGill at the safety position. He's got two years left. But he's also looking at this like a job interview. Charles Woods, um, granted, he has one year left, but those are some of the different little scenarios. Um, Jordan Miller at Nose Tackles really talked about it as well. Uh, this is his job interview, their final uh, piece. Now, some of them do have one to two years or two years um, remaining. And <clears throat> if they put together the seasons they might want and their stock is as high as it could ever go based on their age, especially – Maybe that's where you see them move on. That's putting the cart before the horse, without a doubt, when it comes to kind of predict, predicting and projecting what type of seasons they have. But that's in part why I could see Jalen Knighton having a true RB1 type role. Tyler Levine, if he's healthy, you know what you're going to get. 
I don't know if he's an NFL guy, uh, but he has proved people wrong throughout. But Jalen Knighton has a chance to really prove some people wrong and put it all together for his his you know his lack of a better term is two money years that he has in ahead of him if he wants both. So I, I think the rotation is going to be very interesting this upcoming season at the running back room. But if they can get Jalen Knighton to be that explosive player that you see in spurts on film and he holds on to the football and he shows that toughness, it's going to be hard to keep him off the field. Um, I am intrigued to see if they do any two, two back looks um, and, and do some different things to try and open things up in the run game. Obviously, we talked about Elijah Chapman on the Defense Line podcast and how he's going to play a little H-back. That'll help the run game a little bit, um, in my opinion, when he's in there. This is a running back room and group and, and scheme that has the chance to really blow up into that, what I would kind of equate to the Auburn style that Rhett Lashley originally came from um, and, and how they're able to dominate people up front. I, I do think that's something that Rhett Lashley really wants to get to and put that back together for the Mustang. So Jalen Knighton, LJ Johnson, Ty Levine, if healthy, you look at those three as the true bell cows, I think, right now of the position. Felton Gardner is not going to give up. He's in the back half of his career. And Kamar Wheaton, if they can get him to put it together, it's just a stable that has endless options, depth, if it all stays healthy. And that's pretty special. And it's it's a group that uh, is as deep as I've seen since uh, I've been covering the program, without a doubt. So the running back room is looking really, really good for the Mustangs entering the 2023 season. And um, look, high expectations are uh, put on the shoulders of that rushing attack um, and the running backs in that room. So it's going to be, I think it has a chance to be an exciting, exciting bunch to watch. Before we move on to the next group, the Jack position, we've partnered with Bird Dogs at OnThePonyExpress.com. And Bird Dogs, look, it's so hot here in Texas. It's ridiculous, honestly. But the great thing about bird dogs is you can get these shorts, uh, whether it's kind of gym shorts, khaki shorts, um, joggers, even pants. They have this liner and I love this about them. And if you're like me, you're a big sweater, for example, while well, the sweat wicking fabric on bird dogs is really the best I've seen. Um, I didn't really jump into the bird dogs until we partnered with them. But now it's hard to see me going anywhere else, um, especially the gym shorts. I'm out there at camps. I'm out there at games. It's hot. It's sweaty. Bird dogs are the truth. And I love the fact that I also have these zippered pouches for like SD cards or my keys. Um, you've got pockets all the way around. These are kind of their khaki shorts um, that you like to see. And um, again, kind of my setup, I, you can't see me modeling them. Who really wants to see that anyway? But uh, Bird Dogs have uh, really brought it. I've been impressed. I've talked with their customer service too, just to kind of figure out what best fit is for me. And they're awesome and really took care of me. Uh, if you have returns or exchanges, they're really quick. Um, sent mine in uh, for an exchange on the joggers, for example. Got a little bit more room. Uh, and, and they were really awesome just getting that out and right back to me. So I'm excited to show you those. But the big thing here is you get a free Yeti tumbler when you go to birddogs.com slash pony, or if you're on the site, use promo code pony, and it'll get automatically added to your cart. So a real nice Yeti tumbler um, just sent right to you for free with your order. So check them out, birddogs.com slash pony, and you will get your free Yeti tumbler added to the order. So check them out. Bird dogs, uh, my new favorite short. Uh, you won't regret, regret giving them a shot. So now that we've uh, caught you up to speed on bird dogs and all the great work they're doing, we jump into the Jack position for SMU. And this group right here is really intriguing because if you, if you, look at it and what they've got in front of them. You have a veteran in his final season and Nelson Paul coming back. You have Isaiah Smith, an exciting sophomore returning. He came on 
last year and is a great situational pass rusher for SMU. You have Jalen Samuels, who was suspended for the spring, but is back. And you have Jaden Jones, who played in 10 games last year as well. If he sticks at that jack position, that's a ton of depth right there. But oh, by the way, SMU went out and got an all Conference USA freshman in Cam Robertson from North Texas. Um, and look, this group is now set up for the future. They have a really deep group. Um, and I feel like this is a this is a position that for SMU, we talk about the defensive line last last podcast, and there are a lot of options and different ways for that group to look. And you could say the same about the Jack position in a sense. You have Nelson Paul, who's kind of undersized for the position, but has that burst, has that get off. Um, last year in 13 games, he had 44 total tackles, nine tackles for loss, five sacks, uh, a pass breakup and a forced fumble, he is your most proven guy. But what you have behind him is you have a guy like Jalen Samuels who oozes with potential. He played in nine games in 2022, 13 tackles, four tackles for loss, three sacks. Then Isaiah Smith, who came in as a true freshman, played in 13 games, 10 tackles, four and a half for loss, three sacks. And Jaden Jones played in 10 games, added 11 tackles, two tackles for loss, and a forced fumble. That's a group right there that if that's your rotation, that's pretty solid. But then what I love about them is, and this is across the board, and I've said this from the get-go, and I'll say this about any school I ever cover. The goal is to assemble the most talent on the team that you can get. And SMU did that by going out to get, to get Cam Robertson from North Texas. Um, comes in as a true sophomore after playing in 14 games last year, 15 tackles, three tackles for loss, a sack, pass breakup and a forced fumble. The thing about Cam Robertson, who comes out of the Plano area originally, is he's just scratching the surface, I think. And when you look at what he's going to bring to the table, this is where it's going to be interesting this season. And this was a Power 5 general manager who was talking with our on three national college football reporter, Matt Zenitz. He said, you could see developmental strength and he has solid functional athleticism. Not a freak but a solid player with three years of eligibility left who happens to benefit from the slim market. Well, he had the who's who after him, but ended up at SMU. Uh, another Power 5 personnel director added, I think once he adds that strength and once once he improves on some other elements of his game, he's going to take off. I think he'll contribute next year in 2023. How much I think is the big question, but I think when you're really going to see him take off, it's probably the second year at his new spot. Makes a ton of sense because you have Nelson Paul coming back for his final season, who was really productive. Looks like he's going to have <clears throat> that position really on lock in a sense. And if he does, then you've got to look at it and say, OK, once he's gone, then you have guys like Jaden Jones, Jalen Samuels, Isaiah Smith. Who knows if Elijah Roberts plays a little bit of bandit. Um, David Abiara is also there who could play a little bit of bandit if they wanted to be bigger. But I think that both those guys are really slotted for more of that strong side defensive end spot. So you you would have Jalen Samuels, Isaiah Smith, Jaden Jones, and Cam Robertson in 2024 and beyond. Now, this is the fall camp edition for 2023. So we're not going to go too far down that road, even though I know we did a little bit looking ahead at the running back group. But I think <clears throat> Nelson Paul is your true starter at this point. Um, just has been a guy who... Burst onto the scene as a true freshman, 10 games in 2019. 2020 played in seven. 2021 played in five. Just couldn't really stay healthy last season in, in terms of uh, 2021, the season prior to 2022. This is his COVID year. This is a big opportunity for him to really make those waves now and be able to put together film that can obviously get him to the next level. I think with his size, you're looking at a guy who could be just a true special teamer in an, on an NFL roster. He's really fast. He's about 6'1", 220. But coming off the season he had, he's one of your most productive players that's coming back um, into the fold for SMU. Um, in fact, um, I'm pretty sure he's their um, top returning tackler. I'll double check that right now. Um for SMU, yes, uh, 44 tackles was, was good for fourth on the team. Um, and the next closest returning tackler is Brandon Crosley, who we'll talk about, and then Brian Massey, Elijah Chapman, 
um, and those guys. So, and to think what Nelson Paul did while also splitting time with Gary Wiley last year a little bit, um, this is an exciting year for Nelson Paul. I think he's got the chance to put together kind of an all AAC type season if he's healthy. That's been the key thing for him. Um, I think he battled kind of a foot injury in 2021 here and there um, and wasn't able to really go as much as he would have liked. But the the great thing is, is he doesn't, I don't think he has to do it all this year. I don't think he has to be like an every down guy. If Jalen Samuels comes back and is able to continue his path of development. Now, remember, Jalen Samuels missed all the spring uh, to a suspension. But what he did in nine games in 2022, just kind of getting some more playing time under his belt um, after really redshirting uh, his freshman season 2021, he's got that length. He's got that, I mean, just long body. He plays with a high motor when he's out there. And if he can put together some moves, he's somebody that could step up in the pass rushing realm as well, while also playing with a good bit of length to kind of be able to set that edge. Isaiah Smith, on the other hand, uh, is not 6'7", but he's about 6'3 or so. But the thing about Isaiah is he's kind of a basketball player in this sense. He's got really long arms and he's athletic. Uh, He is really somebody that, remember, burst onto the, not burst onto the scene, but very much cemented his status as one of the top edge rushers in the country as a senior is one of the reasons why we were so high on him, um, you know, as he ended his high school career uh, in the 2022 class. Um, and and he, this was really back when I was at 24-7, we finished this, but he ended up being the 33rd overall edge and the number one player in Washington, D.C., knocking on the door of four-star range. We took a deep dive in his production, his size, all those things. Now, after the offseason, he's added probably 15 to 20 pounds if I was just looking at him, which I did at summer workouts. Um, and he was one of my biggest, I, I would say, takeaways from my time around the team. What he did with his body in the offseason. And that says to me that he is readying and kind of, lack of a better term, smells the blood in the water. You bring in Cam Robertson. Could he play a little strong side end? Maybe. But he's got to continue to develop his body into a bigger frame. But Isaiah Smith sees the playing time there. I mean, when we were out there um, in the in the in the spring, he was really getting a lot of work in, um, able to really develop and all of those things. Now he's added the weight. He's one of my guys that I think can break out this year. We talked about that. Um, he's a really really talented prospect um, who's turning into a nice player, I think, for SMU. So the sky really is the limit for him in 2022. And again, he won't have to do it all himself. Um, coming off the edge, he'll have Nelson Paul. He'll have some of these other guys. Jaden Jones is a guy that kind of is is still developing in a sense. And he missed the spring. He was recovering from injury, played in 10 games last year. And uh, he just kind of flashes here and there. The thing about Jaden and coming out of high school, he went to Parish Pistol. The big thing was consistency. When you saw him play some of the competition he did, you wanted to see him dominate a little bit more. But all the traits are there. All the athletic, athletic traits. Um, and all of those things are there for him to have a big year. So if you're looking at the Jack position and in terms of generating a pass rush, I think you feel best about Nelson Paul and Isaiah Smith entering this season. You'll see what Cam Robertson brings. I think he's going to be a real good player for multiple years for SMU. And then you got to hone in on Jalen Samuels catching up. And you also got to get J- Jaden Jones back into the mix since he mix- missed the spring as well. So this is a group that has depth. And if they stay healthy, should be able to make some plays for this defense. Um, And I think affecting the quarterback is something that with some of the additions on the defensive line and you factor in the jack position, it was a priority for this staff. They have options now kind of up and down the line, but the jack position is where you're going to see some of these guys. And we saw it in third down situations where they brought on an Isaiah Smith. They brought on a Jalen Samuels. And those were big moments, and they were able to affect the quarterback. They've got to be able to do that a little bit better down in, down out. That's the next step for this group entering the 2023 season. But there's depth. There's some talent. They upgraded it a little bit. And I think uh, it's a group that I'll have my eye on in camp in terms of the pecking order, without a doubt. And um, with a guy like Isaiah Smith pushing, he's one of those guys that could really break out and – turn the position into one of the ones that might have 
some of the biggest questions into one of the ones that you feel best about in terms of your too deep, especially. So with that, guys, we're going to wrap up this edition of the podcast. A quick reminder before I go, go to Big Game USA and use promo code BEON3 for 10% off your order and free shipping. And you can get the official game ball of the SMU Mustangs right in time for football season. Um, I, I think this is going to be a lot of fun to throw around the boulevard a little bit. Uh, Preston Stone worked with the group in, in Addison to uh, design the football as he takes over as the starting quarterback. So this is it right here. Um, shipping out in time for fall camp uh, for the Mustangs. When I was there, they were working on it. Um, but check them out. BigGameUSA.com. And then use promo code BEON3 for 10% off your order and free shipping. Get the official game ball of the SMU Mustangs. So hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Lots of preview, fall camp preview content to come. Um, there's going to be a recruiting weekend next uh, week for SMU. So some prospects will be hitting campus. Be sure to check it all out on theponyexpress.com. Again, a quick reminder, subscribe to our members only portion of the YouTube channel uh, for just three bucks a month for a weekly over hour long podcast. We did the depth chart last week. Um, check it out um, and, and be sure to jump on board for the most in-depth podcast on SMU around. So we appreciate you guys listening to this edition. We will catch you later this week with another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. Thanks for listening.